Welcome to Future Focus. Today, we're diving into the metaverse, the blended virtual realm that has captured the world's attention. From Facebook rebranding to Apple's new VR headset, the metaverse has become a hot topic in boardrooms and tech conferences worldwide. Joining us is Trent Clues de Castella, CEO of Foria, an immersive technology studio, to help demystify the metaverse and explore what it means for small businesses. Trent, it's great to have you here. It's wonderful to be here, James. Excited to dive in. So how do you define the metaverse? And what side of the fence do you sit on? Is the metaverse a tech fad or is it the internet reborn? I'm sure if you were to put the question into ChatGPT, it would probably give you a response detailing how it is a online multiplayer shared virtual space where you know people can come together to create, to collaborate, to work, to explore. However, one way that I like to think about the metaverse is it's actually more of really just a new reimagined reality. Beyond that, the simplest way to, to think of the metaverse is it's really just how the internet is evolving. We're finding today we can actually be more embodied in these virtual spaces beyond these rectangular screens. So can you help us understand what technology underpins the metaverse as, as you see it and how, how it all works? Absolutely. The way that we actually think about it is actually a term known as extended reality, which more or less is like 3D media and information that is really the same way that we you know interact with the real world now translating online. And then as we think of more immersive ways to experience this more three-dimensional type of content, we see virtual and augmented reality really emerging into the mainstream. Virtual reality being the ability to put on a headset and virtually go anywhere and see anything. We're seeing some great examples being used in the training and education sector. So working with schools, all of a sudden you can imagine having a virtual field trip within the classroom, maybe shrinking down to the size of a blood cell and going through the body to learn about it. And then on the other is actually in the professional space, we're seeing a lot of training simulations being created in a way that maybe you can simulate certain scenarios that would be high risk. For instance, you know, training a fireman to then run into a burning building, a lot better to do that in a virtual metaverse context rather than necessarily trying to recreate that, that fire. And so there's some really, I think, exciting applications that are already being embraced in the professional and the educational sectors. Whereas augmented reality, we're able to bring digital content into our physical environment. We're actually working on a really exciting project that's transporting users up to the Daintree Rainforest up in tropical North Queensland. It's the oldest living rainforest in the world. And so what we're looking at is actually how extended reality would enable a more meaningful and deeper and rich experience in a way that you can share it with the people around you. I'm really keen to get your view on what do you see some of the opportunities for small business in the metaverse as it emerges and matures? Yeah, I guess firstly for small businesses, we've seen a few mistakes being made in the past of the old build it and they will come fallacy, right? So I think a lot of people thought they'd go out and build these social metaverse marketing experiences and really you're kind of missing the point, I think. You, you want to build really a powerful experience people want to engage with. If your brand had, you know, a place or a home, what would that look and feel like? How might you recreate that? And so a really good example is maybe you have a store, you know, in a small neighborhood in Australia or New Zealand. How are you reaching the global audience, right? You can then think about obviously putting a website out online, but maybe you can virtualize that store. You can have a more interactive exploration through it in a more um, engaging way. And so in the same way you have all these physical assets, simply just digitizing that content to make it available, you're actually having a more engaged and more immersive experience online. And so rather than reinventing the wheel, I think it's actually take what you're already doing and find a way to then extend it and then build more conduits into these virtual spaces to tap into a larger online audience. There's genuinely so much to be excited about in this space. And it's been a real pleasure chatting with you today, Trent. Thanks so much for your time. It's been wonderful catching up and look forward to continuing the discussion, James. Thanks for having me.